Ooh, this looked interesting. This is how A24 took over Hollywood. When you think of great films, you uh, they have a lot of what are they like producer directors company i don't even know but they they straight put on distributor distributor they like they have their tag on all sorts of shit i'm trying to think of what's the first movie i saw but i remember after that movie i looked up so many of their movies and just binged all of them i know it wasn't much because at the not at the time they were new they were new new and then they went crazy. They started popping up all over the place. Lighthouse, um, Midsummer, Hereditary. Bro, there's so many. There's just so fucking many. Let's see. Let me find out what is the first A24 movie I watched. I watched Tusk, saw the thing, and I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. And I saw Ex Machina, and I was like, wow, that's kind of weird, but I like that. I like that a lot. And then I saw Room, and I was like, that's kind of weird, and I kind of like... They always have the same feeling. They're always like, damn, these are kind of weird, but I like this. And then you're like, damn, I really like this. And you're like, damn, this isn't even weird. It's just like, the way my brain is acting is weird, <laughs> you know? Like, their movies go fucking crazy. Yeah, anyways. Oh, it's not Midsummer. it's mid-90s. Anyways, yeah, they got a lot of good movies. They go crazy these days. I need to see The Whale by them. The Whale looks so good. You might think of their directors like Spielberg, Hitchcock, Peel, or actors like Meryl Streep, Viola Davis, Morgan Freeman. But recently, there's a new name in the mix, and it's not a person, but a studio, A24. A24 movies have been nominated for over oh, they 50 did Midsummer. Oscars and have won 16. They've taken over Halloween and, and maybe right. your closet. And the reason why you know their name is part of their strategy. A strategy that's helped take A24 from a tiny distribution company to making some of the biggest and weirdest movies and TV shows of the past 10 years. Yep. True. They go crazy. I've maybe seen maybe more A24 films than the people who work at A24. My name is Nate Jones. I'm a senior writer for Vulture and New York Magazine. Last August, 824, I ranked all of them from worst to best. The company was founded on two sort of Hereditary basic creative bangs, principles. For sure. The first was that they were going to give directors you know, almost unprecedented creative freedom. And then to pay for that, because that is you know creatively risky, they basically decided that they weren't going to be spending money on traditional forms of marketing. They were going to try and use viral marketing and word of mouth, these cheaper ways of gaining attention to their movies. For the first half of their existence, they only bought. They didn't make any of the films. In other words, A24 was founded as a distribution company. They bought. And as your resident film nerd, I have to give you a quick lesson on the movie making pipeline for this all to make sense. So bear with me for a second. First, there's production, where the movie gets made. Then there's distribution, where a company buys the rights to a finished film and takes on the work of marketing it and making deals to connect it to companies that can show it to audiences. That's the third part, known as exhibition, where companies like movie theaters and streaming services show movies for the general public. The studios you're likely familiar with generally take on both production and distribution. So something like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is produced by Disney, and then Disney also makes the trailers, posters, and deals with exhibitors like AMC and Regal to get that movie shown in theaters. But smaller, independently produced films often go to film festivals like Sundance or Tribeca in hopes of getting the attention of a distributor who will buy the rights to the film and will help them make those connections. In the beginning, A24's sole focus was to find great indie movies and buy the distribution rights for them. It's just easier that way. You don't need as much money. You know, it takes a lot of cash to produce a film. It doesn't take as much to just buy a film that's already made. Let's use Spring Breakers, their first hit, as a case study to show how all their strategies come together. Spring Breakers was the first A24 film I saw. It was the first A24 film most people saw. I think it was a very good introduction to the A24 style. The film has an extremely strong one. artistic vision from director Harmony Kareen, who oh. A24 courted by... Oh, I remember that one. That's the James Franco, Selena Gomez thing. Extremely strong artistic vision from director Harmony Kareen, who A24 was the courted first? by making bespoke gun-shaped huh. bongs. The movie had striking visual choices, like this rain that almost looks like blood. 
and a neon color palette that has become a staple of A24 films. It had a clear True. hook. You have these sort of the visuals Disney are cool. starlets like Selena Gomez, and they're you know getting up to no good and doing drugs. And if you were, were a young person who'd grown up on the Disney Channel, suddenly all these people you'd seen in this very squeaky clean entertainment were getting very rough and grimy. And on top of that, it had supremely memeable sequences. So James Franco has you know the first of many A24 scenes that would just become this sort of perfect little tidbit. He has this speech, the look, look at my, my shit. Shit. I got, I got shorts, every fucking color, Scarface on repeat. It was just this Scarface this on weird repeat. Sort of thing that, that really Good choice. caught on. Good choice. Their innovative online marketing strategy leveraged GIFs and memes to make the movie buzzy, like this one that amassed over 20,000 thumbs up on Facebook. Which Facebook. You know, doesn't sound like a lot now, but you got to remember, this crazy. was 2013, back when that the is LA crazy. Times was calling likes thumbs ups. Anyways, the marketing worked. The movie ended up setting per screen attendance records for its opening weekend, as well as clocking the biggest premiere of a movie in limited release that year. The second Damn. weekend, everybody talked a lot about how they hated the movie, but their first weekend was I remember incredible. that. That movie was a huge word of mouth hit. If you look at like how much money it made compared to other films, you know, it doesn't really stand out, but if you look at how much money it makes compared to other, you know, independent films from that era, like it was Did a pretty huge well. hit. And yep. crucially, it proved pretty good. that the A24 method worked. If they could keep curating distinct vibey movies, marketing them online for less money and more virality, and distributing them in a way where the box office can rival the budget, then they were in business. And oh boy, were they in business. Spectacular. They were able to create such a strong Lobster. brand. You knew in your head kind of what an A24 film was. And I think that's down to their sense of taste. And I don't know of any other studio that has such an almost like personal style in that way. They helped launch careers for Ari Aster, The Daniels, and Robert Eggers, and afforded directorial debuts to Greta Gerwig, Jonah Hill, and Bo Burnham. They would find these up in Bo Burnham and be like, we are going to sort of usher you to the next that. level. Ex Machina showed their shrewdness in marketing as they created a Tinder. I think I think personally, Ex Machina is my favorite. But I don't know what. It, there's like so many different layers of that movie that I just. I enjoy so much. Late night, just. Something about it. Just, I like it a lot. Account for Alicia Vikander's lead character, inviting men to watch the movie. And films like Room became big hits at the Oscars. They won their first Oscars in 2016. They won Best Actress for Brie Larson and Room. They won Best Visual Effects for Ex Machina. And they won Best Documentary for Amy. So they were they had been on the scene, they had been respected. They'd sort of known how to play the industry game. You know, they weren't too cool for it. They weren't holding their heads above it. And four years in, after curating a strong brand off of other people's movies, they decided to produce one on their own. So Moonlight right. was the first film oh, that, that they off. made themselves. It was a bet on Barry Jenkins, who had made only one other feature and it eight years more at this point. And they basically said like, we will let you do totally whatever you want. We will support you. Visually, it does look a lot like other A24 films. You know, you have that neon, you have that very subjective lighting. Moonlight, that was when they get their reputation, I think, for like, oh, you know, it's it's not just online hype. They're not just like buzzy. They are going to release some great, great films. If you look at the films they have produced since Moonlight, it's a lot of the movies we think of as like, very A24. Uncut gems. It's everything, everywhere, all at once. You know, it's these movies that are. I haven't big, seen that. Bold, Heard is good. In 2017, they expanded to TV. When you talk to people who watch Euphoria, a lot of them don't know that it's an A24 series because Euphoria airs on HBO, which is a very strong brand, a very big brand, and that kind of crowds out the A24 of it all. It looks like an A24 show. I haven't even seen it. And just looking at the cover, looking at the clips. It looks exactly like an A24 shit. I've been meaning to watch it, but uh, I just always forget about it. It's TV, and I fucking suck with TV. Which is a very strong brand, a very big brand, and that kind of crowds out the A24 of it all. But Beef airs on Netflix, which has a much smaller brand. And, you know, suddenly Beef? that allows the A24 of it all to kind of jump out. And as a cherry on top? They make merch for themselves, not just for the films. You know, they will sell A24 oh, t-shirts and A24 hoodies with that little logo on it. And that's sort of, you know. Oh, that's so smart. That's so smart, especially like, bro, this looks perfect for like their fucking audience too. 
Because like a they're an indie company, and I was like a lot of them are indie movies, Sundance type vibes, indie feel. You know what I mean? Like this is simple merch. A twenty four. That's like a Google. That's like a like an Apple type shirt. You know what I mean? Like clear white. Pe- people eat this. Sold. I already know. Like motherfuckers are gonna eat this shit up for themselves. Not. I. You know it ain't much, and even I take it. Like just for the films, you know they I will take sell it. hot dog. A twenty four t shirts. I take A24 it. A twenty four hoodies with that little logo on it, and that sort of you know helps build that sort of cult around. And that shit would make me feel like a director. So I like. This shit make me feel like a director. A fleecy? This thing would be so soft, too. I won't, uh, I'm a fan of the... I like the movie... Oh, man, I'm a fan. I'm a fan already. T-shirts they got me. They got me. That little logo on it. And that's sort of, I'm the know, audience. Build that sort of cult around this, you know, editorial sensibility that they have. And they employ a lot of the techniques that the fashion industry does do. You know, they will do collaborations with, you know, online Oh, scrammers. man. They will do... Oh, they stay winning. Where you, you know, you oh, against man. Them now. They Pet build Brock. This exclusivity around oh, it, man. It becomes, you know, they're, they're A24... Bro, they're good at the you game. Know, really hoping for to get sure. you know, to play the stuff. And it's something that yeah, no other indie studio has quite managed to pull off. Damn. When you look at their trajectory in retrospect, it's easy to be dazzled into thinking that they've got the Midas touch. And in some ways they do, but... You know, we don't need to build them up too much. Like any student, they make bad films too. You just oh, might yeah. not notice it, because oh, A24 yeah. puts out a ton of movies every year as compared to other studios, both big and small. In 2022, the studio put out 20 films. Oh, even LeBron that's misses, too okay? That's Paramount, like a studio happens. that's way larger than they are. But they have a unique way of hiding their bad films and making them go away. They had a deal with DirecTV. They now have a deal with Apple TV where, you know, movies that maybe they don't think are quite past They just muster, don't put them. They'll just go straight there. You know, those ones won't play oh, at they the Metrograph. Those ones won't be playing at, you know, your cool indie theater. They will kind of quietly shuffle it off to, you know, DirecTV. Maybe people will find them, but if people don't find them, you know, maybe that's okay too. Or you look at the list of A24 films, there's dozens of them that you have never heard of, that nobody has ever heard of. The Adderall Diaries, The Kill Team, Revenge of the Green Dragons. These are movies that truly do not Say Martin Scorsese? That's uh, James Franco again. It's the Amber Heard. <laughs> Kill Team, you've never heard of, that nobody has ever heard of. Oh man, why didn't this pop off? The Adderall Diaries, <laughs> The Kill Team, the Revenge of the Green Dragon. Adderall Diaries, no. Nobody has ever heard of. The Adderall Diaries, <laughs> The Kill Team, Revenge of the Green Dragons. These are movies that truly do right. not exist. But their missteps don't seem to matter much when they're- tr- Oh, it's executive producer of Scur- Okay, I thought it was Martin Scorsese directed. I was like, the foot? Tried and true strategies creates such big wins. When I talked to the fans last year, you know, some of them readily admitted, oh yeah, like I'm in the cult, I'm deep in the cult. And when I asked like what, I asked them why, the key thing was difference. There's so much these days that feels sort of the same, feels very corporate, very controlled. That that was kind of the one thing that they all kind of agreed on is that like, when they go see an A24 film, you know, it might be good. There's a chance it might be terrible, but you know, they know it's going to be just like a little weirder, a little more offbeat. Ideally, it's going to be something they haven't seen before. The n- I mean, that's why I like it. I like it because it's weird. Like, most of their movies are just weird. I remember the, the first time I watched Ex Machina, I was like, I fucking hate this. Because I just, my brain just couldn't with it. And I watched it again, and I was like, man, something's going on with this movie. And I watched it again, and I'm like, man, I, I, I think I like this movie. And then, you know, it just kept going and kept going. And ever since then, I've been stuck on their movies. Like, uh, The Lighthouse. I, there's a couple of them that I need to watch. See, they have so many, it's hard to fucking tell. Like, he says, there's just a slew of them out there. And I've seen a good bit of them. And I like a good bit of them. And I like indie films. So it makes sense that I would. Like, I like the indie vibes. You know? Like, music. Movies. So when these come out, they're fun. And also they're weird. And different. Like he says, there's so much of a lot of shit that's just the same these days. Like, man, it's hard to find, like, the weird shit. (laughs) And they, like, they're not afraid to release the weird shit, even if it's bad. And I respect that. Like, bro, LeBron don't hit every time. But, you know, he be hitting. 
And when he hits, that shit hit. <laughs> like, you know? But. Name means nothing. The name is, there's no symbolism. The name is an Italian highway that leads out of Rome that I think Katz was driving on and he was like, oh, that would be a good name for a company. But it sort of fits, right? Because it's abstract, it's sort of mysterious and you're like, oh, there must be a hidden meaning there. You know, I often like some of the films, you know, you're like, oh, you know, there must be something there. It sparks your curiosity in a way. Right? True. That was interesting. That made me want to watch a movie. I still didn't watch mid nineties. Also everywhere, every place, every time or something. It's pretty popular last year, this year or something. Kinda need to watch that. Kinda wanna watch that. 